We are back with our 2021 Halloween episode, where today we're taking you to the Poe Museum in Richmond, Virginia. Open to the public 99 years ago in 1922, the Poe Museum is dedicated to telling the story of the life and career of Edgar Allan Poe. You may know him as the master of macabre poetry, but there is a lot more to his writing career that we will talk about here. We will discuss his connection to Richmond, his prolific writings, and his very mysterious death, all before exiting through the gift shop. The museum is made up of four different buildings. The first one is the Old Stone House. It is the oldest remaining home in the original city limits of Richmond, Virginia. It's also the only remaining pre-Revolutionary War home in the city. The Old Stone House dates back to the late 1730s, Poe never actually lived in this home, though, as it was a city landmark already in his lifetime, he certainly would have been aware of it. The home where he grew up was about six blocks away from this spot. The main downstairs room of the old stone house is used to display artifacts from Poe's childhood. Poe and his siblings were orphaned after their father abandoned the family and his mother died of tuberculosis when Poe was two years old. Poe's birth parents were actors, which was a disreputable profession at the time, so Poe was taunted for being the son of actors. Poe was taken in by John and Francis Allen, who gave him the Allen name, though they never formally adopted him, even though he lived with them until adulthood. The first room of the museum contains Poe's childhood bed. There are exhibits about Poe as a student where he excelled in the classroom as well as in athletics. The museum includes Poe's sister's piano that's on display. When the home of the Allens where Poe grew up was being demolished in 1927, people saved the wooden mantle from the fireplace in Poe's childhood bedroom and that mantle is on display here as well. There is the story of Poe's first fiancée, Elmira Royster. When Poe left for college, Elmira's father intercepted Poe's letters and convinced Elmira that Poe had forgotten her. By the time Poe came home following his first and only term at college, Elmira was already married to another man. But remember Elmira because she comes up again later. Next up is the Memorial Building. This building houses exhibits regarding Poe's literary career. As you enter the building, there is a casket you can pose in and have your picture taken with the hashtag buried alive at the Poe. A common fear in Poe's day was the fear of being buried alive, a situation that Poe included in five of his tales. In addition to artifacts from his writing career, there's a memorial to Edgar Allan Poe created by the Actors Guild of New York in 1885 as Poe was the son of two actors who had performed in New York. The memorial was housed in New York until being donated to the Poe Museum in 1991. The floor had to be reinforced to hold the weight of the statue, and the ceiling had to be raised to fit the sculpture inside. The room includes a first-run copy of The Raven. Poe had his most famous poem published under a false name in the American Review and was only paid $15 for it. Though as the poem's fame grew, he would make a good deal of money through performing public readings of it. One thing I did not know about was Poe's importance to the genre of mystery stories. His detective stories introduced American readers to crime scene investigation processes of the day, as well as criminal profiling, cryptography, the idea of the least likely suspect being the guilty person, and the trope of the criminal who scatters false clues to frame an innocent person. I really love mystery novels, so it was interesting to learn that some of the tropes that are common today were first popularized by Edgar Allan Poe in writings such as Murders in the Rue Morgue and The Purloined Letter. He had such an influence that each year the Mystery Writers of America now present the Edgar Awards to honor mystery writers. They also bestow the Raven Award to a non-writer or an organization that has promoted the mystery genre each year. They gave this Raven Award to the Poe Museum for their attempts to preserve Poe's history. 
There are also exhibits about how Poe was one of the earliest authors of science fiction, and he was a major influence on science fiction legend Jules Verne. There was another room upstairs we want to talk about, but first, let's talk about the stairs themselves. We mentioned that the museum rescued Poe's childhood fireplace mantle and placed it in the first room of the tour, but as his childhood home was about to be demolished, they also rescued the staircase that led up to his bedroom. That staircase was then used in the construction of this building. When you go up these stairs, you are walking up the exact stairs that Edgar Allan Poe walked to get to his bedroom each day. At the top of these stairs, you come to the reading room that featured Poe-related artwork on the walls and books written by or about or inspired by Poe on the shelves. There's also a library of other Poe documents and manuscripts that can only be used by appointment. From that building, we move on to the North Building to see exhibits related to the mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe in 1849 at the age of 40. Poe had married his cousin, Virginia Clem, which wasn't uncommon at the time, but she had passed away a couple years earlier. After that, Poe returned to Richmond and once again courted his childhood sweetheart, Elmira Royster, who was now a widow following the death of her husband. They were again engaged to be married. Poe left Richmond on a trip to Philadelphia. Turns out he was dead 10 days later. He was found unconscious at a voting precinct wearing clothes that were not his own. He was taken to a hospital where over the next several days, he occasionally awakened into fits of delirium where he would converse with imaginary figures and he shouted out the name Reynolds, though no one knew who that was but he had no recollection of what had happened to him over the last week. Edgar Allan Poe passed away on October 7, 1849. It is said his last words were, Lord, help my poor soul. Poe's actual cause of death is unknown. There are more than two dozen theories as to what killed Poe. Newspapers at the time listed the cause of death as congestion of the brain, a common euphemism for alcoholism or other disreputable cause of death. No one can say for sure what happened in his final days or how he died. As we exit the North Building, we head out into the courtyard, featuring the Enchanted Garden and an Edgar Allan Poe Shrine. This courtyard is home to the museum's two black cats, Edgar and Pluto. One is named for the author himself, and the other is named after the cat in Poe's story, The Black Cat. The two were found as kittens in the garden and have been raised by the museum staff in honor of Poe's love of cats. They can be found in the courtyard or in the gift shop during business hours. We were only able to find one of the two cats during our visit. The other one was in hiding. From there, we enter the final building, the gift shop, which included many interesting items to purchase. This museum was really interesting. We learned a lot about Poe that we didn't know. If you're a fan of his works and you find yourself in Richmond, Virginia, you should check this place out. At the time of this video, tickets are $9 for adults with discounts for kids, seniors, and veterans. Click on one of the links at the end of this video to find some more spooky content. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. And we'll see you the next time we're traveling through.